In this episode of Sailing Dark Angel, we sail down the Florida coast from St. Augustine to Lake Worth to Fort Lauderdale. Instead of traveling the ICW, we take two multi-day trips down the coast, braving offshore weather. If you like our videos, please smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. It's free for you and really helps our channel. So what are we doing today, Captain Dave? Today we are heading out of St. Augustine through the infamous St. Augustine Cut. Why is it infamous? Because boats break on it. There it's is bad. a moving shoal that you can't really, the markers are not charted. I mean, they are, but the charts are wrong. So you have to visually watch the, the markers to see where the, where the channel is. And all around it, you can see breaking waves from the shoals. Yeah, this, this one's a little bit of a tricky inlet. It's no joke. You catch it right, it's fine. Yeah, well, we didn't catch it right coming in. Oh, eight to 10 foot oh. waves broadside in a narrow channel. What's the, what could possibly go wrong? Oh, it was so bad, y'all. It was so bad. It was so scary. And there was no way I would be standing out here on the way in like I am right now. Pelicans are so goofy looking. Look at you. Look at your face you dinosaur. But there is another boat ahead of us heading out, full sails, so it must be pretty safe to come out now. We were stuck here for like, what, a week? Yeah, about that. Guys, coming into this inlet, right at the end, can you see what's there? So you got to cross that I'm pretty much, they, they must have put it there so you could be praying while you, that you can make it in. So you put that cross up there, I'm pretty sure to pray that you make it in for sailors. Let me know in the comments if you think I'm wrong or if you find out I'm wrong. So, Captain Dave, why is it important? Why is it important to uh, go out at the proper time? Well, if you go out against the tide, you're gonna be fighting current and you could be fighting a standing wave depending on the weather. Okay. And also, what is the other bad thing it does? It eats diesel. Yeah, it burns fuel. Too much fuel, and that sucks out loud. Because diesel is expensive, as you all know. <laughs> when we get out, we'll put the sails up and take advantage of this 2.2 knots of wind. We'll be rocking. Oh. Back and forth mostly. Nice. Today's gonna be most motor sailing. I think tomorrow we'll have some wind behind us to push us south. How long are we out here for? Probably two days. You think that we had left late, but we didn't. We were waiting for slack tide on purpose. And then when we woke up this morning, it was really super foggy. So it's like, no, you don't go out in this kind of fog. And there's the breakers over there. I'm sure it's a lot of fun to play in that surf, but there's probably a lot of riptides.
There's Daytona Beach from the other side. see that but there is sunlight shining through the clouds there's some buildings on the horizon we're finally getting closer to shore we're about uh, 12 miles out yeah. and that's my favorite engine noise no engine noise nada yep we're so doing we're about doing. both 3.8 four, four knots anyway which gets us in during daylight hours about 9.2 nine knots on port side. Not a lot of wind, but with a little bit of current behind us and uh, two sails. We're doing about 3.6, four knots in silence. Silence? It might seem like we're just crawling along, but this speed gets us in in daylight. If we kept the engines Dolphins, going Dolphins, and motor sailed, Dolphins. we wouldn't get there until, or we get there late at night tonight. And who wants to go in an inlet in the dark? under full sail, but you can't even ask me to get out. Perfectly dangerous, and we're going to get shit from so many people. I know, plus standing there with the sail. What was that? What is that? On the list of things that are not a warm fuzzy, we've had no issues since we left St. Augustine until just now. A squall has formed in front of us, and we got to head right through it. We got lightning, thunder. I don't know how much of that sky you can see, but it turns real dark when you go that way. On radar, this is the storm cluster here. There's us. You can see from my track, I have turned us offshore to try and go around it. I'm gonna try and catch that outside edge if we can get there quick enough. My phone is not plugged to boat power. It is plugged to a battery, a battery pack. We have our handheld uh, VHF radio set aside unplugged fully charged and uh, so with my phone for a chart plotter and the handheld for communications we should be able to keep going under sail if we get hit depending on how bad everything gets fried both computers are unplugged and uh, we're just going to try and make some supper and ride this out all right i've switched the radar to weather only so you can see the squall there's a line along the shore here a little bit of activity here but there's the big body of the squall so I was heading out that way to try and go around it but it appears to be moving off the more I look the more it's moving over offshore if that's the case we're in good shape to come up and stay on course this way 
we'll see how it tracks. The problem with uh, squalls is they don't track the same direction as the wind. They track by growing from the center. So lots of lightning, lots of thunder, lots of excitement. This is what we like to see. The storm is no longer on radar and the sky is starting to lighten up. Now you probably can't see it on here, but it is. So hopefully we're through the worst of it and we can keep on heading south to uh, West Palm Beach. Things are real good. We're gonna shut the engines back off. So nice sailing silent. Running away from that storm last night burned a ton of fuel. So we're running on one engine right now to try and conserve. And uh, just wanted to come out and catch this sunrise. off of Palm Springs. So the rest of the story is as soon as that storm moved off we kind of snuck in behind it. Half an hour or so later the wind changed went so directly on the nose we didn't even have to change course to take the sails down. Dead on the nose. <laughs> so we've been motor sailing since and uh, just a few minutes ago I took down the jib. We should be on the inside in about an hour or two. So what are we doing today, Captain Dave? Bailing. Bailing oh, from bailing. where? Bailing would be bad in the boat. No, we are headed <laughs> out of uh, Lake Worth and headed down to Fort Lauderdale. Hopefully get down there in time for Thanksgiving with Anthony and uh, pick up a few last minute items before we head to Kimini in the next weather window. Awesome. And here we How close did we cut it? <laughs> For getting out of here. Oh, today's the last weather window day for like the next week and a half. Yeah, because it looks like there's some really crappy weather coming in and Thanksgiving is coming up and we did promise that we would be down there for Thanksgiving. So, and then, but the sun is shining. It is a good day. It is a good day. But this lake is filling up, I'll tell you. Like yeah, it's, I don't know where we're anchoring to the other end. Lake Sylvia is going to be very cool. Yeah, Lake Sylvia is going to be tight. But we are excited to go and see Anthony. We're excited to see you, Anthony. <laughs> Buddy, he's our guy. That's why we're going to Fort Lauderdale. Otherwise, we would just stay here. But we're going to go see him and spend Thanksgiving with him. Yeah, I would so. stay, stay here and day hop to keep his game and go to Miami and skip Fort Lauderdale all together. But. Yeah. You're the crap out of me. Such a jerk. He tortures me, guys. <laughs> Nobody else here to do it. <laughs> so mean. Somebody come save me. Dinner with friends last night. That was really nice. They were here. Oh, not dinner, sorry, drinks. Yeah, drinks and snacks last night. And it was a lot of fun. Cal and Marty. They're an awesome couple here at uh, West Palm Beach on Lake Work. To see them in Bahamas. Yep. We'll meet up again, Bahamas. According to the chart plotter, we should be turning right here and heading down into shore. Oh. Yeah, these are confused seas, guys. This is what it looks like. So it's a little rough coming out of this. Uh, We've got tide going out and waves coming in. Yeah. And it's a little rough. Not bad. Yeah, we've seen worse, but as you can see. And I am hanging on. <laughs> down, up, down, up. Yeah, it, it's, it's a little ugly out here, but gotta do what you gotta do once we get out of here out out for a little further out it'll smooth out but it's a bit much right now are you turning yeah okay Dog to 
dock routing keeps us very close to shore, but I want to go off three miles. Okay. We can empty the black tank and we can uh, make some water. Okay. It's a little cleaner offshore and it's a little nicer sail. Yeah. Understood. Once we get out of this mess, we'll raise the sails. Yeah. Take advantage of this three knots of wind and just go. It's only three knots? Oh, come on. <laughs> What's our speed here? Five three? Oh, okay. Okay. <sighs> so it's going to take us approximately 10 hours from um, West Palm Beach down to Fort Lauderdale to get to Lake Sylvia. Lake, Lake Sylvia might be a little bit tight to get into. So we're starting to do a little bit of research in what other um, lakes are available. And I'll start that research once things calm down. Because going inside the boat and um, looking up stuff is not an option right now with how bouncy it is in this boat. Woo! Uh, yeah, it's really confused. What I do as part of my job is I go down in to the halls and make sure that all of the ports, port holes are closed. So that one's closed and that one's closed and that one's closed. And the ones in the front room, the bedroom are closed, closed, closed. And then I go to the other side to make sure those ones are closed. By the way, that Dometic freezer is uh, holding about $500 worth of meat. And this morning when I go, when I went to go and uh, pull out the ribs for the crossing, the uh, it was off. And I think it had been off all night because we had a little bit of fl a power fluctuation last night. We, uh, But I didn't check the freezer, of course. And this morning it was off. So, But all of the meat inside is fine because it was all still frozen. So the Dometic is a really great freezer so we we figured out the problem and of course now it's on because that glowing little light right there indicates that it's on so we're good and then of course our bedroom our temporary bedroom right now all of the portholes are are closed so we're good we're good we're good <laughs> 